Hi, it's Thursday and welcome to the daily video blog that we've been running now for about seven weeks. Um, we've got a guest again today to talk to you. It's Deb Stevens and she's uh, the uh, local hub coordinator for the food cell. Um, we're going to be talking about how we've been supporting some of the most vulnerable uh, across the county in terms of making sure that they continue to get food at what's been a very difficult and trying time, I know, for a lot of people. Before I do that, again, I've just got a couple of items I just want to update on first. Um, yesterday, I spoke a lot about the opening of five of our household recycling centres. Um, we were monitoring that in real time just to see how things were going. Uh, I'm very pleased to report it seemed to have gone very well yesterday. Uh, we actually had a lot of people turn up as we expected, but everybody was really understanding. I have to say the staff got a lot of compliments for the way it was managed. Uh, everybody waited in turn. Virtually everybody had proof of, of their residency in Buckinghamshire, which was a key thing we asked you for. Um, and uh, people basically just managed the whole thing very well. Um, I think the average wait was somewhere between 15 minutes as a minimum and sometimes just over an hour. Uh, but again, thanks very much to everybody for bearing with us on that. Now, all those five sites are going to stay open. Uh, so there's no need to rush down today, tomorrow or over the weekend. You can pace yourself, go down maybe next week if you've got space to store what you've got already accumulated. So please just manage your time and, and try and relieve some of that, that sort of first rush um, on the uh, on the waste sites that are now open. Uh, and just to say, we're also obviously going to try and reopen the other four waste sites which carry on being closed at the moment. Uh, but we're going to do that probably over a little bit of a longer time. Uh, they're more constrained in terms of the site access uh, and the ability to socially isolate on those particular sites. The other thing I just wanted to mention was that there is obviously on the news a lot about testing um, and we do now have a mobile testing centre um, in uh, Aylesbury, um, which is actually going to be at the Aquavale Leisure Centre from tomorrow, that's Friday, uh, for up to three days. And if you meet any of the criteria laid down by the government for being testing, tested, and, that, and that's quite a wide range of, of criteria now. Uh, for example, if you're over 65 and you have symptoms either yourself or within your household, uh, you can apply online um, and you can obviously search for that through Google or a similar search engine, um, or you can go to the gov.uk website uh, and under apply, um, you can find how to apply for a, a coronavirus test. Um, and that facility will be available in Aylesbury, as I said, for about three days. So having said that, um, I think it's time to hear a little bit more about how we've been working to maintain food supplies to some of the most vulnerable across the county during the uh, coronavirus emergency. So I'm going to hand over now to Deb, Deb Stevens. Um, and Deb, over to you. Tell us a little bit more about what's been going on. Thank you, Martin. So over the last six weeks, I've been working in the food cell as part of the COVID-19 emergency response. Our main role, as you said, is distributing emergency food parcels to the most vulnerable residents in Buckinghamshire. These parcels contain a mix of fresh food and store cupboard essentials and are sent out from a central hub in Aylesbury. We work closely with the eight local support hubs that are operating across the county and we take referrals from them as well as weekend referrals from adult social care. Our focus is on vulnerable residents who don't have a support network around them and who are shielding from COVID-19 so are unable to leave the house to get food. The local support hubs work to find sustainable support options for residents and we provide food parcels to ensure that the household has food whilst this is being set up. We also provide regular food parcels to the most vulnerable residents where they need them. Setting up the food hub from scratch has been daunting as we had families who needed food almost on the first day that we went live. We've been able to secure a regular donation of non-perishable food from Morrison's, as well as one-off donations from the other supermarkets, which has helped us create our sto store cupboard parcels. We also purchase fresh food, toiletries, household essentials where, we, where it's required. We've also been able to repurpose food from local businesses who are closed, such as the Waterside Theatre, to ensure that no food goes to waste. If I thought that setting up a food hub from scratch was daunting, then working out how to get parcels all over the county from the base in Aylesbury was even more overwhelming. Luckily, I was put in touch with the Bucks and Oxen Rescue Group, known as Borg, and they've been amazing. No matter how many deliveries I send them, what day of the week it is, however short notice, they always get their team of volunteer drivers to turn up and drive across the county delivering to doorsteps. Come rain or shine, literally last week in the pouring rain, they're able to help us. 
Since we set up the Food Hub on the 30th of March, we've collectively made over 400 deliveries to vulnerable families. All of us in the Food Hub are grateful to for their ongoing support. And then just a reminder, so if you or someone you know is struggling to access food, please contact the council so we can provide you with the different options that there are in your area. So that's the emergency food parcels. We've also been working to understand the food options available to residents in Bucks. We've been updating the directory on our website to include information about businesses that have changed their operations due to coronavirus. As well as the existing volunteer and community group options, there are now sections listing the supermarket alternatives and businesses which are offering takeaway hot and cold food searchable by postcode. We're also adding in information that we have from the supermarkets about how to access food from them, such as volunteer shopping cards or food box options to help with the shortage of home delivery slots. If you are a business and you want to be included on the website, then please email us on foodcell at buckinghamshire.gov.uk. Or if you want to have a look and see what's going on in your area, go to our website and search for food. There you'll be able to look up everything in the directory. The third really important area of work that we've got is working with the network of food banks. We have six main food banks across Bucks and collectively they provide over 11,000 food parcels a year. Unsurprisingly, demand for their service has risen sharply and they have to contend with this whilst also seeing a reduction in the donations. So less people are visiting supermarkets, there are limits on non-perishable items, so it's really been difficult for the food banks to make sure that they've got the food ready for the parcels to go out. Also, we're trying to look at how we can support them now in this period, but over the longer term, because demand for their services will not necessarily reduce when lockdown is lifted. If you are unable to give food to the food banks via the collection points in the supermarkets, then please consider making an online monetary donation. The food banks will use this money to purchase essential food to help families in need. The information about this can be found on each of their websites. It's been really great working over the last six weeks on the food cell. It's been a, quite a steep learning curve and it's really rewarding to be working in an area that's making such a difference to people that are receiving the food parcels. Our amazing community centre team have been repurposed and are now running the hub. And it's been great to work with them and also meet all the volunteer drivers from a distance and hear back from them the reactions of residents when their parcel arrives. I'm really proud of the way that the wider team have pulled together to secure donations of food, source the additional products that we need locally, such as ice packs and cool bags for fresh food to be stored in, and also the team that are working every day to ensure that the residents who need it are able to get supplies. No day is the same in this role. This week, my biggest challenge is to find a home for the hundreds of unsold Easter eggs donated to us, whilst trying to keep the food parcels as nutritionally balanced as possible. We don't know how long we will need to run the food cell and central food hub for, but we're so pleased we're able to do something practical during this time, especially that makes a real difference to people's lives. We're taking it week by week and we'll ensure that we are able to provide food to residents who need it most for as long as they need it. So thank you, Martin, for giving me the opportunity to talk a little bit about what we're doing. I'll hand back over to you. Thanks very much, Debs. And uh, can I just say, if you're looking for a home for lots of uh, unsold Easter eggs, I'm very tempted to give you my details, but uh, I'm not sure my waistline could actually take it. That sounds great. And I've really, I think a really good example, people say to me about what, what are the council staff doing uh, during the coronavirus uh, crisis we've got. I think it's a really good example there of the way in which we've been reprioritizing and repurposing a lot of our teams to actually give support to some of the most vulnerable um, across the entire county. So some really great work going on there. Uh, just two things to sign off with. First of all, um, to remind people that next Monday, the green waste collections start up again across the county. So if you do subscribe to the green waste collection, uh, there's no need to rush down to your household waste site over the weekend. Uh, if you're doing any gardening, the green bins will be collected from Monday onwards. Just to remind you that actually the times may change. So although the dates will stay the same, the times may change. Uh, so it's important that you put out your bins early, probably around 6.30 in the morning, just to be on the safe side. Uh, the other thing I just want to remind you is tomorrow is VE Day. Uh, we did have a video blog uh, session earlier on this week about that, some really great work the team are doing there. Uh, obviously, what we can't do is have all the celebrations that were originally planned, street parties, things like that, big events. Um, what we're doing instead 
is encouraging people to celebrate in their own way at home, uh, to do some virtual celebration. There's a lot of information on the Buckinghamshire Council website about the E-Day, and we are asking people to send us uh, their own either personal recollections or perhaps those of uncles or aunts or grandparents who took part in VE Day. We'd really like to hear uh, about those particular memories uh, and particularly if they were very personal to Buckinghamshire. Uh, perhaps your parents have lived or your grandparents have lived in Buckinghamshire for several generations. Really like to hear what happened here on that day uh, and that would be great. So we're going to also celebrate then by lighting up some of our big ceremonial buildings in the county. Uh, if you're in Aylesbury, have a quick look at Old County offices and Old County Hall in Market Square tomorrow night. You might see them illuminated slightly differently from normal. And if you're in High Wycombe, uh, you might see the same thing down uh, in the civic buildings there as well. So keep your eyes open and, uh, and see what's done for them. Having said that, obviously, uh, we're not going to be broadcasting tomorrow. It's a bank holiday. Uh, I'll see you all again next Monday. Stay safe, stay well over the weekend and have a good time.